Hello everyone, in today's video we will cover the initial setup of Game Creator. This is meant for those who are starting from scratch. We'll be going over all of the modules that are available and what they do. In order to do this we will need Unity, Game Creator and the modules I discuss. Before we start I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the absolutely amazing support. Now we're going to start off by looking at Game Creator and its modules. So Game Creator is the core. Think of it as a visual scripting system, but made easier. So there's no actual nodes or real scripting going on. It's all triggers, actions, and conditions. So really simple system. Well, simple as in easy to use. Um, it includes a safe load system as well, character creation, and camera setup. So really complete, and it's the core of everything else. Now, in theory, there's not really any limits to Game Creator, so you could do all of this without needing the modules, but the modules make life so much easier. So I'm going to start off with some of the essentials. So the stat system is really essential for any type of health, stamina, mana, whatever you can think of, damage systems. I, I consider it a core essential. Then we have the behavior module. Now the behavior module is exactly what you think. It's for character behavior. It's a behavior tree, so you can um, make this as complex as you possibly want. But it's basically what well creates your AI in the game. So definitely really useful for any type of game that has characters. So 99% of games really. Then we have the combat systems. So we have the melee module and the shooter module. Now these do exactly what you'd expect. So the melee module is for any type of melee combat. It's actually really in depth. So, you know, there's so much you can do with the melee module. It's a really, really good system. The opposite is the shooter module. And this is not just for guns, but also think bow and arrow. So if you are going for a RPG type game, and it's mostly melee, there most likely will be some bow and arrow action in there as well. So that's what the shooter module covers. Speaking of RPG, we have all of these other three systems that are really useful if you are creating an RPG or open world game. So the inventory module does exactly what you'd expect. It's an inventory system. So think of Skyrim, The Witcher, Zelda Breath of the Wild, any type of game that has inventory um, with armor, clothes, so much you can do with this. Even if you are not creating an RPG and think of well, GTA for example where you just can change clothes, haircuts, etc. You will be able to use the inventory system as well. It includes a monetary system, it's really useful. And some basic crafting by the way. Just thought that need to, needed to be said as well. The dialogue module does, well, dialogue. Um, yeah, it's a dialogue system. I don't know what else to say. Uh, you can create dialogue, but the nice thing here is that um, you can set actions with dialogue as well. So it's not just the basic conversation. All of these actions and conditions can be set with dialogue as well. So if there needs to be any next steps, depending on what you say, that's where you can use the dialogue system as well. So really useful, again, for any type of RPG game. And the last one is quests. Now, there is not a single RPG game without any quests in it. And the quest module does exactly that. So you can create quests all based on actions and you know conditions as well so really really useful now this is an unreleased module it's coming this year and it's a traversal module so think parkour climbing well all of your type of traversal so look out for that one now we have this other side which officially are the unofficial modules but a lot of them are really well i wouldn't say a lot i think most of them are actually really useful now we have the combat module, which does a bit more than just combat. So at its core, it's a targeting system. So think of targeting like 
well, like in many shooters, but also open world games. So for example, Assassin's Creed uses targeting in its sword combat as well. If there's a lot of enemies on the screen, you'd be able to, you need to be able to target the enemy you want to fight at that time. And that's what the combat module does. Now, one of the recent additions was actually a spawning system, which is a pretty core essential for any open world game that you can decide to spawn, despawn characters or objects in the world. So a really useful performance saver. So definitely check that out. The Photon 2 module is intended for any type of networking, multiplayer games. So if you are going to create a game that has any type of multiplayer component, the Photon 2 module does exactly what you'd expect. So it integrates the Photon 2 networking system with Game Creator. So definitely an essential if you are creating a multiplayer game. We have the Tools module, which is intended for your actual project. So it has a lot of debugging actions. You can spawn objects and prefabs in your environment directly debug consoles pretty useful if you are going to well if you are creating a project so really useful while developing we have the ui components module now the ui components module is really nice for any type of ui action and actually contains one of the best features for any type of ui which is a mini map and full screen map now the mini map well, pretty sure you've seen that in so many games. Think of multiplayer games like Call of Duty, open world games like GTA, Skyrim, etc. So minimap is well, the highlighted feature, but there's also some other actions like displaying characters in a canvas, movies in a canvas, etc. The accessibility module is something you most likely wouldn't think of, but if you're actually going to launch a game in production, is pretty essential for any type of game. So think of colorblindness settings, um, impaired hearing settings, if I'm saying that correctly, but also some really useful features if you are creating a mobile game. So being able to customize the default setup of the joystick, for example, is one of those things. So Game Creator by default has that layout. So if you just publish for Android and iOS, all of the controls will be there and the accessibility module allows you to customize that a bit further. So really useful if you are well, creating any type of game really, but especially for mobile as well. And the last one is not really a module. It's just a asset with a set of actions but houses some really useful ones. So for example, moving platforms for platformer games, but also randomizing actions. Now these randomizing actions are really great. I'm really happy with those. If you are creating an open world game and you don't want, well, you don't want characters to behave exactly the same every time you enter that little village and it actually randomizes what they do, the randomizer actions in here will allow you to do that. So for me, it's pretty essential because I am creating an open world game, but yeah, definitely look into that. Now let's start off with actually setting up our project. So I'm going to create a new one here. I am using um, Unity 2019. 2018 will work fine as well, of course, but 2019 just adds so many features I wouldn't want to miss. So I'm, I haven't really used 2018 at all. It's just so much added in 2019. I, well, need is maybe exaggerated, but definitely could use. So let's just call this one setup. You have a couple of options here. So 2D, 3D, well, you know exactly what it does. Um, and you have the different render pipelines, so HDRP and URP. Now, if you're not familiar with what this is, uh, the render pipelines are basically, the easiest way to say it is different 
lighting systems and i know that's incredibly oversimplifying it because it's a lot more than that it changes the materials it changes material settings it changes uh, skybox settings it does a lot more adds volumes for fog for example so it's a lot more than just that however what i would recommend is actually just starting the project with 3d and you can always just add these to the uh, via the project manager so you don't need to decide this right now you can just start with 3d and then add these settings later so we're just going to start with 3d so here we are with a brand new project now the first thing we are going to do is actually import all of our assets through the asset store going to narrow down on just game creator and let's start with installing these so I'm going to import the first one you will have this little pop-up that says um, you know game creator install it gives you a warning so please consider using the unity lts version well, obviously I'm not doing that as I'm using 2019, but you know, I can assure you there are no issues. So it works just fine. Perfect is installed. Now I'm going to import these last actions and I'm quickly going to just import every other module into my project because otherwise this video would just take too long. <laughs> Now that we've imported all of this, we still need to take an extra step. So as you can see, we have a new game creator tab here. And once we open this up, you will have check for updates. Now this will actually check if you have the latest installed. So that's really nice. You can check now and you know, it lets you know if you're up to date. But obviously you can also do this through the asset store. Now you have the reinstall game creator option. So if it didn't go well and it's bugged, which could happen if you're importing it into a existing project that already has a lot in there. In a new project, I doubt this would ever happen. And in tools, you will have documentation, show toolbar, which I'll show as well. And it has all of these options by default. Now, I'm not really a big fan of toolbars myself, so I'm just going to close this down. And we have obviously a review option and documentation. Now, documentation, let me open it up. It will actually guide you through to this page, which has a lot in there. So get started, set up tutorials, which I definitely check out. There's loads of tutorials in here. So we have all of the official ones and we have the community community created ones. So Indie Game Hustle has some really, really good tutorials. Definitely check those out. And at the end of that, we have my own as well. So yeah, really useful if you are going to get started with this. There's also an explanation on what everything does as well. Now, before we can use all of these modules we have the module manager now i have quite some modules so this is a pretty big list but basically what you need to do is install all of these modules and this is also where you update them so you will notice that while importing it only takes half a second but this is what you need to do next so we're just going to start off with this one and it will show dependencies as well now it doesn't show dependency game creator because without game creator you wouldn't have this window so it doesn't need to show that but that's a given i assume so i'm going to install all of these first and because this will take a bit of time i'm just quickly going to do all of this and then we can continue <laughs> Now that we're done importing all of these and enabling all of these, you will notice that aside from the actual 
modules themselves, we also have the examples. Now, I would recommend anyone to really install these examples. Not just because examples are useful, but for example, for the stats module, it will also set up some basic stats. So this is really going to help you along. So definitely just install these examples. And then later on in your project, you can always remove those scenes if you no longer need them. But I'd still recommend everyone to really import all of those. So right now, this is our simple sample scene, the default one created by Unity. And if we go to plugins, game creator, we will have a really long list. Now, if I'm going to examples, for example, scenes, you will have the very first intro, which will take you through everything that game creator does. So gives you an explanation of how actions, events, and triggers work. Now, if you don't know how this works yet, I would definitely recommend checking all of this out, not just playing this and, you know, see the fun thing, the fun things that happen um, while you're, you know, while you're doing this, but also actually, you know, check here, you know, this is all just triggers and nice actions. And there we go. Now, this is all really nice and obviously, you know, pretty cool and useful. And it explains all of the basics that Game Creator has. But once you back out of that, I would definitely recommend actually checking, for example, this one, uh, one of the most important ones of how triggers, actions, conditions actually work. And check out, turn on gizmos and actually check how all of this really functions. So what happens when you actually walk in here, what is going to happen? Now, if I open this one, you will have the default trigger. A trigger basically is what initiates a set of actions. So this trigger is on player enter and it will then start these actions. So really, really useful. Now, if you are done with all of that and you are going to start your first scene the really easy setup is simply creating a plane I'm going to put this in the middle here it's easier let's make this a bit bigger there we go and here we have our plane now i'm going to go right click game creator characters and add a player and the last thing you need to do is game creator and other and we have our camera motor now this camera motor is literally what exactly what it says it is it's a motor for your camera now this main camera that was set up by default will suddenly have a hook camera and camera controller so this is all done by default so there's nothing you need to do for that which is really nice and if i would hit play right now I would already have a character that is walking around, already jumping, all of that with the default keys and it's working. I have a camera I can control and yeah. So as you can see, getting started with Game Creator is really not that hard. It's really useful, but there's just a couple of things you need to be aware of. So make sure you do everything in the module manager and obviously you can you know check the getting started so when you go to preferences and you will have a couple of options here you can set by default but that's it for now a really simple video showing how you can create a basic project using game creator so hope you enjoyed this and i will see you next time